A little while back, we were testing the Grabby Flyer for an audio sound. As you can see, I put the mic to everything, from the top to the bottom, and there's an anomaly that came up in my Tesla coil. So the top four inches of it, when the mic blanks out, there's actually a sound there. And the sound is 20 hertz. And it's going to become more important because of the testing it's done right after this. As you can see, here's where I put the mic. It cut out my camera at one point, but I had it tested and it came up 20 hertz. So let's take a look at this. But there is something interesting going on with your Tesla coil in the silent zone. And it, it's, a, it's still producing sound at around 20 hertz. And it's actually producing quite a bit in that zone. Okay, so here is your Tesla coil. Now, this is your voice in the higher frequency ranges, but at 20 hertz, the lowest one right to the left here, is where something is going on. It's cutting out all the noise, but it's producing something at 20 hertz. It's peaking there. I would say maybe 18 to 20 hertz. So now that we know that the 20 hertz frequency is there, what is it affecting? This right here was a test that I did on my Grabby Flyer that had to come with motor speed. Now, my motor speed on the top is right around 1200 RPM. The significance of that is that that's 20 hertz. What's going on is my Tesla coil is being operated by the RPM on my Grabby Flyer of my top disc. 3.30, again 3.30, this is the voltage going into the motors, Let's speed it back up, well, you can see that rapid acceleration now in that top one, immediately changes the pulse rate. <laughs> Oh man, if everybody only knew how interconnected this whole thing is. Now that we know we're creating a pulse rate, I want to show you two things. One, where my gravity flyer is not connected on the bottom, I'm getting a huge energy dump at the very bottom. The pulse rate starts to go away and then we get an energy dump. Right here I'm checking the wires. The wires themselves, the one that goes to the left, runs to my high voltage. The one that runs to the right is part of my Tesla coil. What's going on? Even the wires are getting the same beat frequency of 20 hertz. What, why is it doing that? Well, the Tesla coil has taken over everything. And because the wires are so bad on the insulation that it's taken over everything. This is one of the rare secrets you're going to find when you build this craft when you leave things the way the original builder put them. He used bad wires. What is the result? You're getting the pulsed frequency of 20 hertz throughout your high voltage, throughout your Tesla coil, throughout your top motor. And everything is controlled by the top motor. As the speed changes, the beat frequency changes. This is one of the things that you have to do. So if you're using better wires on this, understand this. You may not even find this effect. It may not affect your whole craft. So it's very important to use what the original designer did. This is why I am very reluctant to change many things on this gravity flyer at all. Because of how interconnected they are. Let's go ahead and let's look at the frequency a little more in depth and what it does. Hey Nathan, I wanted to show you a couple of things with my acoustic levitator that were really interesting. Now this contraption can levitate just small little objects. Um, it's not really powerful or anything like that, but what I find interesting is that it's showing the same kind of frequency spectrums as your Tesla coil. It's also showing that 20 hertz signal. And now you have to be careful of that because when you're moving cables and stuff, um, and if you don't have it isolated properly, it will display that. But I made sure I wasn't moving and 
this acoustic levitator is definitely throwing a 20 hertz signal out. This is a CAD E70 condenser microphone and it's hooked up to an M audio interface that hooks up to the computer USB. And I have it tuned pretty much perfectly, so there shouldn't be anything kind of anomalous going on here. So I recorded multiple takes on this just to make sure that I was getting accurate readings and unfortunately the sweet zone to get the actual object to levitate is very small. I'm going to need more equipment to measure this more accurately because this microphone basically goes from 20 to 20,000 hertz, but the transducers can get up all the way into 40,000 hertz. But ultimately they should not be producing anything low frequency, especially at 20 hertz. That doesn't make any sense. So it definitely calls on for more testing. Another thing too is that Alexei is only human and he'd only be able to hear from 20 to 20,000. Anything over that and especially into ultrasound, he wouldn't be able to hear that. So there's definitely a lot of variables even when it just comes to the acoustic profile of this machine. And I'll try to let you know if I discover anything interesting in the near future. Now that you've seen the 20 hertz play a role in a levitating machine, where the speakers are used to levitate small objects, let's understand this in a little bit of a different way. This is the next test that I'll be doing again. I'm going to go back to this, and I'm going to create the ions underneath between the two discs. Remember, when I show you this, I know it's upside down in the picture, but this is the way that it's going to be. This is going to play a significant role in how our upper plate works. Because our lower plate is different than our upper plate on where it gets connected. Our bottom plate is going to be connected to high voltage negative. Our, uh, our center plate is going to be connected to high voltage positive. Our upper plate is going to be connected to the Tesla coil in a 20 hertz frequency. In this next test, it'll be very simply understood why we're doing it. In this experiment, you have a plasma arc created. You're going to put it in between two speakers, just like the levitation experiment. This is taking the speakers and creating frequency in it. Because of that frequency, the arc is moving. Why is this important to our gravity flyer? Well, now that we understand what it's doing here, when we connect the top plate at 20 hertz, we understand the frequency is going down. Now it's going to interconnect with our plasma arc underneath. One of the big questions in doing this, and the reason I'm redoing the experiment, is because we have a whole new factor when it came to our Tesla coil on the 20 hertz frequency. As we see the top plate being manipulated, this experiment becomes more important. What's going to happen? Is it going to go to the center right there and manipulate that plasma? Is it going to allow that plasma to form and go into the center plate? Is it then going to go to the sides of it and allow for the ends to be charged? And that's what's creating the downward force. Does that mean that the lip on the outside of Alexei's original device had more importance than what we gave it? It might. It's important to do all the tests to find this out. Now you can understand a little more. The interconnectivity of this device is why you cannot change the parts. One last note on when you do this test. You'll see it start to arc out. What does that mean? You're losing all of the momentum that you're getting from that plasma and it has to start over. When Alexi speaks about things sparking out and you have to restart the test, I do believe that he's talking about this. I understand other people say he's talking about something else. This is the one critical area where if it sparks out, you have to start over. Because the center disc will not absorb all those ions and keep them there unless it stays good. As soon as it sparks out, they all disperse. Just so we understand that point more clearly and why I think it works this way. This is Alexi's upper disc. Please look at the piece of brass that goes in there to the actual rotating plate. This one will skip on and off 
just like it would if you wanted the Tesla coil to be connected to it. As a matter of fact, when this thing gets fast enough, it won't touch that piece of brass at all. And that's exactly where you want the Tesla coil when connected to a rotating disc. This right here is Alexi's lower disc. Again, look at the piece of brass. It is placed directly against the plate that rotates. There is no gap in there. This thing runs tight. When creating high voltage on the bottom where we're going to put the plasma at, it cannot arc out. It cannot have any distance between that piece of brass and that rotating plate. It has to stay connected at all times for the effect to work. This is why I think Alexi wired it this way. The top plate is doing something different than the bottom plate, and it has to do with how he's connecting the brass. I just want to give a big thank you to James at Tech Planet. He went through this and created all the sound stuff that you heard today. Really good. It's good information, and it's really going to help out a lot. If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.